So, I'll try, try to explain what the sketches and diagrams are. So, suppose that there's a uh, light source A and light source B, they're both at the same distance L along some x axis uh, from an observer O, and uh, at some point in time, let's say at, uh, in, at time zero in our frame of reference, where we see the two. Uh, beacons or light or light and night and uh, or whatever uh, pulse sources of light, they are um, stationary in our uh, frame. In this frame, we can draw the trajectory of the uh, light pulse x as a function of t. I multiply uh, t by c for convenience. So in this diagram. The trajectory from 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 beacon B, or from from light source B, of the light is just a straight line with a slope of forty five degrees in this diagram, because the velocity, because the velocity is x equals c velocity of light times c, with with beta equal one. If the observer then moves in this uh, frame with a velocity or speed which is a fraction beta of the speed of light c, then the trajectory or the um, yeah the x as a function of t of of uh, the observer will be x equal beta c t, and this is the this brown line here. The the uh, um, trajectory of the of the pulse from beacon a from light source a is this. Uh, straight line with a slope of minus 45 degrees because it's coming towards the uh, observer. Okay, so if the observer is stationary, then the, the two um, light pulses will meet at the origin after a time which is exactly L divided by C. What happens to the moving observer? If the observer moves with this uh, with this um, uh, speed, so it has this trajectory. His path and the path of the, of the light from the two, from the two beacons, will intersect at different times. So, in this frame, the stationary frame, the observer will be, will be lit by will be hit by the light pulse from A before it is, or. Uh, it is lit. It is uh, hit by the by the light um, from from beacon B, and the two times T A and T B can be computed with these uh, equations, right? Intersecting those two lines, and you see that uh, T A is equal to L divided by C one plus beta, and T B is L divided by C one minus beta. So T B is greater than T one. And you see that it's nice that for beta equal or beta equal zero, then it's the meaning that the the, the, the uh, uh, observer is stationary. Then you will have that T A equals C B and it's L uh, over C. What is the time difference between the two? Delta T. You, you you take the difference between these two and you get two times L over C beta divided by one minus one minus beta square. And since one minus beta square uh, is called gamma square, gamma is so called Lorentz boost boost factor. You can rewrite this as two L beta divided by C times gamma square. Right. For both uh, light pulses, the emission time was taken as zero. T zero A and T zero B is the emission times of the event. Of the of the of the light pulses. Now, what happens in the observer's frame? Take my other sheet. In the observer's frame, S. Now, I just use Lorentz's transform Lorentz transformations because this is what relativity says. And this is uh, what Einstein said. So, in this in this frame, both the uh, x and the time, both, both the uh, coordinate, space coordinate of of uh, objects and events, and the time coordinate 
they change with this law, which is called the um, length transformation, and this is for a for an observer that is moving with respect to the other frame with a um, speed which is beta c. Beta is a fraction of the speed of light. So this is the law that I'm using, and in this event, the light emission event, which happened at for, for beacon A at zero time, T0A was zero, T0B was zero, uh, but the emission positions were different. The position A was uh, L, but that was at X equal L, and position B was at X equal minus L. So you, you plug this into the, in the transformation law, and you get that the time of emission of of pulse from A in the uh, S prime frame, which is the moving frame, is not zero. It is used according to this law. You plug it in, and you get that the time is minus beta. That C multiplied by the time of emission is minus beta gamma L, which is a negative time, right? And uh, the position of the beacon. Uh, as a function of uh, x a and t a is this. So at t a, at the emission time in the in the in the rest frame, which was which was zero, then you get that x a equal l and t a equal zero. So this equals gamma l. You make the same calculation for x prime b, which is the position of the beacon b at the time of light emission and it is minus gamma l so they're not a distance l from the observer they're a distance l multiplied by this gamma factor so then if you take if you if you take that in this in this frame what do you have you have two light emissions from two sources one both located at gamma l distance from the observer one positive the other negative but they start at different time. The beacon from the light from from beacon A starts at um, is, is 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 sent at a time. The emission happens at a time minus beta gamma l, and the emission of light from B happens at beta gamma l. Now, how how much time does a ray of light take to reach the observer? Since it's gamma L, the distance for, for, for the two, for both, the time taken from emission to uh, uh, absorption to, 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 to the time when it, when it gets to the observer, the time is the distance divided by C. Velocity of light is the same, the spe speed of light is the same. So you have to, but since you have, uh, they're, they're emitted at different starting time, you have to add the starting time to the, to the, um, uh, interval or the, 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 to, to the to the to the time that, that the light takes to 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 to, to um, cover that distance, and then you have to add that to, to the to, to the starting time, and you get this. If you plug in numbers or the, the 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 values, you get that the time on the clock of the observer, when uh, the observer will register the 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 light from A, will be gamma L. Just plugging plugging in the numbers, gamma L divided by C times one minus beta, and the uh, time on the clock for for light pulse from B will be gamma L divided by C one plus beta. So again, the light from A will arrive before the time from B. This will not be changed, right? But the the, the time difference between the two events, getting light from A from B. If we make the difference between these two, is 2 beta L divided by C times gamma. Whereas in the observer, in the in the stationary frame, the delta T, the, the difference between the two events, was the same one multiplied by gamma. And this is what is called the time dilation, or the twin paradox, or whatever. So time... Uh, runs differently between two frames and the, and the factor between the two is exactly this gamma factor which is what, what I was mentioning before. Uh, this is the, the twin paradox, right? The time for, for the stationary observer 
is longer. So the the the, 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 the for instance, if this is a decaying particle, it would it will in 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 the particle frame it will last um, two microsecond if it's a muon. If it's if it's in the lab frame where the, where the muon is, is has got a, a a high speed, it would last longer. And the and the and the dilation factor is precisely this gamma, which is precise, which is what is predicted by relativity. And this has been verified to an incredible precision.